Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Allison and if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so down below. Hit the notification bell. I upload weekly so that's something to look forward to. Today, I will be sharing with you my pregnancy journey and all the things I went through um, to end up with my rainbow baby. So without further ado, let's hop right in. So my fertility journey started back in 2016 when my boyfriend and I found out that we were pregnant. Um, I had just finished college and I was back at home working full time and he was finishing up his last semester of college. So as soon as I found out that I was pregnant, I called my sister, I called my mom to share the good news. I think we found out on a weekend. So I had called on um, the very next Monday and I scheduled my eight week appointment. Went in for the eight week ultrasound. Everything looked okay based on the baby's size. We scheduled our 12 week appointment and when we went in for the 12 week appointment, they said that there was no heartbeat. We were devastated. Like there were no words. Both were so distraught about losing the baby. Um, again, like I said, like we were so nervous because we were gonna be first time parents and we really weren't, we wasn't planning this baby, but we were also so excited to welcome a child into the world because in my eyes, children are just a blessing. I was super 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 sad um i really like couldn't eat for like a couple of days i just felt really down and i really looked to like my sister and my mom to really lean on because you know although they've never experienced a miscarriage they understood that loss of like wanting to be a parent the second pregnancy happened um, in the year of 2017 so we were pregnant 2016 like December so a couple months after in 2017 we were pregnant with the second baby again pretty typical eight-week scan everything looked okay we got another scan at 12 weeks and the doctor had mentioned to us that based on the size the baby didn't make it past 10 weeks and that there was no heartbeat so Again, we were saddened by this news and we, you know, went home and we tried to cope with it and, and really just hadn't really grasped like what was happening to us. So um, we again leaned on our family and our friends to kind of get us through a difficult time. And um, at that point, we were like something was wrong. So we spoke to the OB, the OB ran some tests, but the only thing that came back was a positive ANA, which is the an anti-nuclear antibody. And sometimes this is associated with having lupus. So we were prescribed um, a baby aspirin, which he said could help. We got pregnant again within those three months. This is the third pregnancy, and that one ended the same way. I was experiencing some brown discharge that eventually turned to the color like pinkish red, and then it turned red. I didn't really have much cramping. I mean, I had a little bit of cramping, but I wasn't like in excruciating pain. So I didn't think too much of it. I really just thought like the bleeding was like a normal thing. So after the third miscarriage, um, the OB sent me to one of his colleagues, which is a specialist. He was a reproductive endocrinologist and he was amazing. Like he was so like, he just brought like a light to the situation and he said, you know, this is really tough. I understand that, you know, you guys don't want to do IVF. You don't want to try to do, you know, um, anything extreme yet. You wanted to give it a chance to happen on its own. And we did, we didn't want to do IVF. We let him know that like that was not something we were considering um, at that moment. And so we really stressed that, you know, if we did do IVF, that would be the last resort. So he really just recommended us not to try again until he ran a bunch of tests, did a couple of procedures, just to figure out if he could find anything else besides the positive A and A. He also warned us that it's possible after each pregnancy and having these DNCs where we would go in and have um, the baby removed from my uterus um, after we found out there was no heartbeat that we could possibly run into the issue of having scar tissue which is 
a whole nother issue that um, you would have to have a procedure for to remove the scar tissue and then try to have a baby. So we wanted to avoid that. So some of the procedures that he performed were, I wrote them down because <laughs> I'll forget what the actual name is and I'll like totally screw up the name, but a hysteroscopy, an endometrial biopsy, laparoscopy, karyotype testing, genetic testing, semen analysis, and fetal tissue, which is um, tissue that they test after you have a DNC. So I chose to have a DNC. I did not want to experience having um, the miscarriage at home, so I opted out of that, and I said, let's just go ahead and remove the baby because um, I just didn't want to deal with the emotional aspect along with the pain. I felt like it would be too much for my mental. The only thing that came back was a small fibroid that I had in my uterus and it cleared up, I would say within a few weeks. So that wasn't really a concern. He had mentioned that the fibroid was probably the size of like half of your um, pinky fingernail. So I really wasn't concerned. He wasn't concerned. He said, you know, we'll watch it to see if it grows any larger than what it is. But he's like, it could just go away on its own and it did we then got pregnant in 2018 now this is going on our fourth pregnancy and that one happened the very same way I had some discharge I had a little bit of bleeding I had some cramping and I didn't really you know I wasn't really feeling well so I called my OB and I told him the situation and because of my history they were like just come in I was out of town at the time I was actually visiting um, Ahmad's mom and things like that and so I wasn't home at the moment so I went ahead and scheduled a ultrasound for when I returned back to Boston at the appointment they had mentioned again that there was no heartbeat and um, I didn't make it past 10 weeks and I think at this point I was I was about to be 12 weeks but um, I maybe I was like 11 and a half weeks so um, the baby had been without heartbeat for, I want to say, like a week and a half. So then we went to see the doctor, the RE, and he explained to us that, you know, he would really like to do the IVF because he could watch the pregnancy step by step and kind of figure out where, at which point, did things take a turn. So we were still adamant about not doing IVF. Um, I was really against like the IVF drugs and having to inject myself with all of these different um, needles and it was just a lot it, like mentally I just could see that going very left so we wanted to avoid that at all costs and so we really just were we were solid on sticking to our plan like our plan was to try very natural and you know when it was time God would bless us with a baby. So our fifth pregnancy happened in 2018. And when I tell you this pregnancy was like just a blur to me because I felt like we were living in a nightmare. We went into it like almost jaded at this point. We were like, you know what, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's not our time. Like So again, we lost the pregnancy. This time I didn't have any cramping, bleeding, or I didn't feel like any like really pregnancy symptoms at like 10 and a half weeks and that's what really prompted me to call my doctor because I was feeling nauseous and then it just suddenly went away and I was like that's a little fishy because I'm always sick like for a while um, so uh, I called the doctor and the doctor had mentioned to me that you know again come in when you have the chance to come in and we'll take a look so I went in there was no heartbeat and I was around this time I think I made it to 11 weeks um, as far as like the baby size and everything it was about 11 weeks so fast forward um, I want to say another six months and and we decided we were gonna move to New Jersey where um, Ahmad is originally from so we moved all of our things to Jersey a really good friend of mine her aunt had gone through the same thing where she had a few miscarriages and she eventually saw this RE that was in Westchester, New York. When I tell you guys, this doctor was so amazing. Like he was so thorough. He checked every box to make sure that like he could answer all my questions and just really assured me that like 
whatever we do, we're gonna work hard to get you your baby. So um, I really, I really loved being in that office because that office was amazing. Like even the nurses were amazing. So he did a sono, sono histogram. <laughs> he did a sono histogram and he also did uh, a few like labs. He took some blood. He got my records from my previous doctor um, just to see like what was done, things that he could check off the list and make sure that he kind of like hit everything. And once we did that, nothing came back alarming, still had a positive ANA. Um, which he had explained to me, you know, women walk around with positive ANAs all the time and they're completely healthy, they're able to have children. But for some women who are trying to have children and, and are having the issue of recurrent loss, the positive ANA does sometimes play a role. So he said the only treatment that um, has been shown to work, like research has shown to work, is doing baby aspirin and um, at the time of pregnancy, or a positive pregnancy test doing um, a low dose of Lovenox, which is a blood thinner. After we got the results from the sono histogram and all the lab work that was taken and they really couldn't find anything besides the positive ANA, he did say when we were ready to try again, if it didn't happen within three months to come back and we will reevaluate and see where to go from there. So going into 2020, we got a positive pregnancy test. So I immediately called him and let the office know that I had a positive pregnancy test and he told me to come right in. So we scheduled an appointment, went in, and he prescribed me the Lovenox. He prescribed me, and I believe it was 30 milligrams um, of Lovenox, and he prescribed me the baby aspirin, which I had already been taking, but he wanted to make sure I was still taking that, so he had um, prescribed both of those. So when I did go into his office, I was six weeks along. We did an ultrasound, everything looked okay. He said, come back in four weeks. So that right there was like a little nerve wracking for me because I'm like, four weeks? I don't know if I can make it that long. <laughs> I had so much anxiety just around like that 10, 11 week mark that I was just, I was a mess. Like I had anxiety for those four weeks. He said, if I didn't feel, um, like any pregnancy symptoms or if they suddenly went away he said i can always come in and do another ultrasound um before 10 weeks so i was like you know what i'll deal with it i'll, <laughs> I'll get through my anxiety so i got to 10 weeks and i went into his office we did the ultrasound and he said everything looked great the baby was actually growing, I think, a couple of days ahead, which was really great news. I graduated from his office and um, I was really like in like this weird space where like, I'm like graduating from your office. Like this is, this seems a little too premature, but I trusted him. The nurses there trusted him. I trusted him. He seemed pretty confident in um, this pregnancy. So, you know, even the nurses, even some of the nurses had said to me, there was one nurse in particular who I adored and she was telling me, she's like, I had the opportunity to work closer to my house, but because I have so much faith in this doctor and because he's so amazing and I see how much of an impact he makes in all of his patients' lives. She was like, I know that like, this is the perfect place for me. He's really like, he's really good. So <laughs> I was like, okay, wow. Like if the nurses like the doctor, this is this is a good thing that is my part one of the infertility story that i want to share with you guys please subscribe and hit the notification bell and i will see you guys in part two <laughs> you, know, you don't know what you're doing so stop pressing things please stop pressing stuff daddy doesn't know what he's doing he doesn't know how to work the camera so you don't know how to work the camera you can't be touching stuff Say hi to the camera. Say hi. Little kiss. Little kiss. Mm -hmm. You do it.